should I go to the OAS top 10 and should I look at look at those things and start the checklist there or, or what should I do? And I was looking at the OAS uh, top 10 and for me, all of those bugs, they are completely out of date. That's the first thing. Uh, okay, maybe they're very prevalent on the web, but if you want to be a bug bounty hunter, you can be sure that those bugs are going to be fixed when they come to uh, the production, to the target uh, stage of their uh, bug bounty program. I have mixed feelings about OWASP. Let's say, for example, that you're a penetration tester and someone asks you to do a penetration test on their web application. You'll be following the penetration test according to the OWASP top 10 and maybe some other methodologies. And that's simple enough if you don't find anything. If you find something, you report it and you do, you actually recommend fixes based on the recommendations or based on the guidelines that you find in the OWASP uh, top 10. However, um, the OWASP uh, testing guide, especially the one just released in 2020, I think there is, yeah, it, there is a web app testing guide from the OWASP that was released in 2020. It's quite extensive. Of course, it's not as extensive as a bug bounty hunter would be when it comes to testing for specific vulnerabilities. Let's say, for example, XSS. OWASP might give you a couple of tools or a couple of filters, and they might actually give you quite a few good filters that you would be looking for or you would be applying when it comes to testing for XSS. However, a, someone who specializes in XSS will know much more than that when it comes to bug bounty hunting and will be much more successful. So we'll have to go beyond that. It might be, so in this case, I guess my short answer would be OWASP is a good starting point, but uh, you would have to definitely do your own work and actually do your own personal exploration of what you're interested in. Because if you start participating in a bug bounty program, for example, on whatever platform you are part of or whatever external program you found yourself, if you're just going to test for the generic OWASP top 10, the chances are that you won't be very successful. So it'll take a long time for you uh, to actually go in depth with a specific thing. So when it comes to being a good uh, bug bounty hunter, in my personal case and my personal current thinking right now, I would say that you would have to actually specialize on a certain bug, flaw, or vulnerability. Even though some people say that specialization is for ants right now, that's not the case. I mean, you can see most of the very successful security researchers have their own thing. For example, you would be focusing on XSS or some sort of input validation, or you could be focusing on a couple, maybe two or three flaws that you're really good at finding, but you won't be focusing on 10 and be good at all of them. You'll just be focusing on a couple of them and that's gonna be much easier for you to research them in much more depth than you would be able to, if you cannot be an expert on all OWASP vulnerabilities. Plus, if you research, for example, on XSS, if you specialize on XSS, you can uh, actually drive the research field your own because you can find unique vectors of attack that you might want to share with others, you might publish research on, or you might just want to keep them for yourself and just apply them and actually get more money with all the programs that you're participating in. Level up your skills in bug bounty hunting and penetration testing with my course Recon in Cybersecurity and master the fascinating world of reconnaissance. Link below.